let me show you why Lightroom's split toning tool is such a great help for color grading your landscape images. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw files from the link in the description. And now let's jump into it. As always, I will be showing the whole editing process. If you're just here for the split toning part, make sure to check the chapters of the video because I will be starting by merging an HDR image first. So down below in the film strip, you can see the three images. We are going to use them, select all of them, right click, then go to photo merge and choose HDR. Once the preview has loaded, all you need to do is hit the merge button and Lightroom will create this HDR file for you. Now we can start with the basic adjustments, getting the exposure and the white balance correct. So let's expand the basic panel. And what I want to do is to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape because I want this image to be well saturated and the landscape profile helps pushing the saturation a little bit. Then before I adjust the white balance, I most of the times do the exposure adjustments first just to get a better idea of what the image will look like. So right away I can tell this image is a little bit too dark. I'm going to bring up the exposure very gently. I do want to keep it on the darker side, but I also want to have some more visible details in the very darkest parts of the scene. Then I'm not a big fan of this blown out sky. I'm going to drop the highlights and since we have merged an HDR file earlier, we have a lot more dynamic range to play around with and bringing down the highlights like this, we now have a much better looking sky right here. I also want to bring down the shadows very gently, just adding a little more contrast to the scene. And I do think we can increase the whites, which should help brighten up the shot. And I'm going to drop the blacks for a little more contrast. While I'm adjusting these tone sliders, I'm always paying close attention to the histogram. Right at this point, I think it looks good. We might have a little bit of clipping, but I don't think it's too dramatic. Now that we have adjusted the exposure, I can start working on the white balance. At the moment, this shot looks very cold and blue because I just used the wrong white balance settings. This was shot at sunrise, so I want to bring back some warmth to the scene and we can do that by simply raising the temperature. I'm going to raise it to a point where I just think it looks better. This doesn't mean I'm aiming for a neutral white balance. I'm just looking for something that looks good to me. So I think right around here is a good spot. We still have some blue tones left in the very darkest spot, but the sky looks much, much better. And you can actually see the snow in the foreground does have a very neutral color tone. So I think that's a pretty good white balance. Then I want to add a little bit of sharpness by bringing up the texture. And at the same time, I want to create some dreamy look on top. Therefore, I'm going to bring down the clarity gently and I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. All right, and finally, let's bring up the vibrance to boost the saturation of this image some more. All right, let me show you the comparison from our raw file to the basic adjustments. You can see thanks to the white balance, we have a much warmer looking image and the exposure is slightly enhanced as well. So now we're going to focus on a few areas more locally before we start with the color grading and the split toning adjustments. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel and I'm going to start by working on the snowy patch in the foreground. We can select that using an objects mask and I'm making sure the rectangle select mode is active. And with the rectangle select, all we need to do is draw a rectangle around the snowy patch. And as you can see, Lightroom will create a perfect selection for us. Here I want to add more contrast. So let's do that by bringing up the highlights. Also going to increase the whites, which will make the bright parts of the snow just a little bit brighter. We could even bring up the general contrast slider, I guess, in this case. And at this point, I'm a little worried about the color of the snow. I think I need to adjust the white balance for this particular area. So I'm going to bring down the temperature, trying to neutralize the color cast on the snow. I also think I need to bring down the saturation because I want the snow to be almost white, just a hint of blue in there. So I'm going to drop the saturation quite a bit. Right around here looks great to me. All right, I also really love the texture of the snow, which I want to improve by bringing up the texture. And I'm also going to add some clarity to further make this texture visible. Nice. If you want, we could also add a slight S curve to it. So let's bring down some point in the shadows like this and raise a point in the highlights. 
All right, this is looking great. Enough for the foreground. Let's also focus on the sky a little. I'm going to start this with a linear gradient covering the very top part of the sky, which I want to make darker by bringing down the exposure. All right, at the same time, I not only want to make it darker, but I also want to introduce more blue tones in the darkest parts. So I'm going to bring down the temperature for that. Let's bring it down very gently. And just like this, we have some more blue tones in the sky, which works really well together with the warmer tones of the image. What I want to do as well is to target these mountains in the distance. Therefore, let me create a linear gradient roughly covering the top part of these mountains. Of course, we're now also targeting the sky, but we can get rid of that quite easily by subtracting a sky mask. In here, I'm going to add some more contrast. Let's also add some whites. And I do want to add clarity. This will help make the structure of these mountains more visible. And I think having more details in this area looks much, much better. I also want to bring up the dehaze very gently like this and maybe even raise the texture a bit. Okay, looks good to me. At this point, let us work some more on the sky. I'm going to create a, another sky selection mask. This time I want to target the brighter parts of the sky. So I'm clicking on those three dots, go to intersect mask with and choose radial gradient. With this radial gradient, I'm just targeting these very bright tones behind these mountains. And what I want to do in here is to add more warmth to the brightest parts simply by raising the temperature. Okay, I do think I can also raise the tint, introducing some more magenta to this area, but this is looking good. Maybe we need to adjust this radial gradient a little more, bringing it down a little bit. Okay. Then I also want to add a little bit of glow using another radial gradient, just covering the brightest parts of the image. Let's tilt it a bit and I'm making sure it's overlapping the darker mountains in the foreground so the glow effect will become more visible. To create this glow effect, all I'm doing is to bring up the blacks. All right, I do think this area might be a bit too bright, so I'm going to bring down the highlights, toning down the overexposure in this part. And then let's also bring down the dehaze, which will make the glow effect just a little bit stronger. Wonderful. Of course, since we have added this glow effect on top, we also need to create it on the bottom. So I'm going to use another radial gradient and I'm just placing it somewhere right here in the reflection. And for the reflection, all I'm doing is to slightly bring up the blacks. We just need to have a little bit of glow in here. That should be enough. And finally, the last mask I'm going to create is for the reflection itself. I'm using a linear gradient covering most of the water like this. And I'm going to subtract a linear gradient from the bottom because you don't need the snow in the foreground. Here, what I'm going to do is to add clarity, which will make the reflection just look a bit nicer. And I'm also going to slightly drop the exposure, making it darker. Wonderful. So that is the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks so we can see the difference from before to after. Wonderful. That is looking much, much better. Now let's take a look at the split toning with which we can give this image a really nice sunrise look. You can find the split toning under the color grading panel right here. With the split toning, we can target the highlights, midtones, and shadows of an image and add specific color tones to them. For a sunrise image like this, we want to keep the highlights warm. In fact, we can actually make them even warmer with the split toning. So clicking on this little icon right here, we are going to head into the highlights where we can set up hue, saturation and luminance. First, we're going to choose a color which you want to apply to the highlights. So I'm going to set up the hue. And since we're aiming for a warm color tone, I'm just dragging it up very slightly. I think somewhere around here in the orange range is a very good color for this image. At this point, we can't really see anything. To make it visible, what we need to do next is play around with the saturation. For sunrise images like this, I like to go crazy with the saturation slider, bringing it up quite a bit. And as I raise it, you can see how the highlights of the image will have this orange tone applied on them. This is looking really, really good, but it might be a little bit too strong. So let's tone it down a notch. This is a very good spot. 
Now, most of the times I'm only using hue and saturation when I'm working with split toning. But if you want, you can also improve the contrast of an image by using the luminance slider. This doesn't have a big effect on the color, but it will have an effect on the brightness. So bringing up the luminance will make the highlights brighter. On the other hand, bringing it down will make the highlights darker. This way you can kind of find tune the exposure if you want to. However, in this case, I'm not going to change the luminance. What I want to do is to go ahead with the midtones, clicking on this icon right here in the middle. With the midtones and the shadows, I usually like to add a little bit of color contrast against the warmer highlights of an image. That means I'm going to use the opposite color on the color wheel. Since we use a warm color tone for the highlights, we are going to use a cold color tone for the midtones. So I'm going to set up the hue to a cold color tone right around here and I'm going to bring up the saturation so this will have an effect on the image. Let's raise it quite a bit. Usually I'm not going as crazy with the saturation of the midtones, but I think in this case it looks pretty good. We can also take a look at the shadows and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply a cold color tone for more color contrast between shadows and highlights. So let's use this blue tone and again use some subtle saturation like this. This is looking wonderful. Let me deactivate the split toning settings real quick so you can see the difference from before compared to after the split toning applied on top. Much better, but we can further improve it. You might have noticed this icon on the far right side. This is for the global settings. Here we can add a color which will be added globally over highlights, midtones and shadows. I think for this image we could make it a little bit warmer. So let's add up the color tone. I'm going with a very warm hue right around here. And I'm going to bring up the saturation very, very gently. This will just add a little hint of warmth to the image as well. All right, but now let's go back to the highlights once more. Under highlights, midtones and shadows, we also have the blending and the balance sliders. Usually I'm not going to use the blending slider, but what I'm going to use from time to time is the balance one. If you're bringing the balance slider more to the right, the highlights will get emphasized. On the other hand, if you're bringing it more to the left side, the shadows will be emphasized and thus it will make the image a little colder since we set up the shadows to be cold. But we want this image to be warm, so I'm going to increase the balance slider in order to make the image look warmer. And let's go with something like this. And that is our image after the split toning adjustments. Again, let me turn off the split toning so we can get a better idea. This is what we have started with. And here we have the image after the split toning. And now I hope you can see why the split toning is such a powerful tool to color grade your images. I'm really, really happy with it. Now, the only thing left to do in regards of the color grading is happening in the calibration tab. Here, as always, I just like to bring down the blue primary hue, making these red tones a little more intense and making the blue tones just look a little bit better in my opinion. All right, and let's push the saturation so we get a nice colorful image. Wonderful. That's it for the color grading. Now let's do some sharpening in the details tab. Here, what I'm going to do is to bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking while holding down the Alt key. So only the important parts will be sharpened. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done, looking good. Now there might be one more thing we can do and that is to stretch the image vertically because I'm not sure if I like the size of the mountains in the distance. So what I'm going to do is head into the transform tab here. I'm going to make use of that aspect slider and I'm going to bring it up very, very gently, which will just stretch the image vertically. And thus we are creating some kind of bigger mountains for this image. I don't want to overdo it, but I still want to stretch it a little bit like this. Done. All right, and here we have the finished image. So I hope that the split toning part of this tutorial will be helpful for your upcoming images. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.